Hey guys, welcome to the D-Day Anniversary Special on my channel. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at detailing a member of Number 3 Commando, Royal Marines. So the base figure is from Dio Park. This is their Royal Marine Set A. Again, kind of a nifty model with the bicycle. And we're going to be doing some basic upgrade work. And we're going to be adding very simple details, which will include adding some insignia, some helmet hessian tape, and a weapon sling for each brain gun. So we're going to begin with probably the most iconic um, item of commando gear next to their green beret and that is the commando tab and shoulder badge and for that we're going to do a bit of very simple sculpting with green stuff so this is a two-part epoxy putty and we're going to take the a and b of the two putties and we're just going to mix them in equal measure we don't need too much we're just going to be making the actual badges themselves so i'm just pulling off a tiny amount 50-50 or as close to as possible as you want. You, you, you can add more or less, but for this 50-50 works fine. And I'm just going to mix it until I get an even green color. To prevent our putty from sticking to our work surface, I'm just going to take a sheet from a very cheap picture frame. I'm just going to put a bit of water on it to stop it from sticking. And we're also going to coat our fingertips in water as well as our tools. And this will stop the putty from fixing to us or from sticking to us. I found that since we're only making a small circular piece of uh, putty here. I'm just actually going to roll it with my fingers and I'm just going to put the small circle onto his upper shoulder. And then taking a cocktail stick that I've dipped in water, I'm just going to start gently rolling this um, circular piece of putty until it flattens out into a circle. I'm also going to do a little bit of filling And again, same uh, principle, I just have a sausage of green stuff. And it's going to use uh, a dipped cocktail stick in water and just start rolling to fill a large gap between his jacket and his assault jerkin that I noticed when I was working on this video. I'm just going to cut away some of the excess. Again, just dipping things in water. And just further blending with our cocktail stick. So with the basic body work done, now we're going to add some very delicate details. And I'm just going to roll out a really thin sausage to make maybe a half moon shape. I'm going to dip my finger in some water again to stop the putty from sticking to me. As you can see, I just take out a tiny amount of putty, very thin, and I make a half moon or crescent shape. And that's going to be his shoulder tab. As you can see here, I just gently push it on with my finger. And it should stick in place. And again, the same rolling. So the next simple detail we're going to add is we're going to add some of the helmet netting and hessian tape that is very iconic to the Normandy campaign. So first things first, we're going to make the camo net for the helmet. And for that, we're going to use some fail mesh, which you can get uh, online. I'm just going to take some gel type super glue and I'm actually going to glue it to the inner face of the helmet. That's how you get that re realistic shape as in you're actually affixing it to how it would have been done on the real on real helmets. And again I just stuck it to a little bit of blue tack just to help um, handle this a bit better. And once it's stuck on one side we can flip it over and now we can actually start fitting it to the helmet. Just take a little bit of liquid CA glue, not a lot, just a small amount. And I drape it over the helmet and hold it taut. I don't want uh, it to flop around too much. And then I just take some liquid CA glue and start locking it down. It's very simple. And then once the glue is dry, I'm going to start uh, trimming the excess back and folding it back on top of itself until I get a really snug fit. And 
And for the actual Hessian camouflage itself, we're going to take some Tamiya masking tape. And we're going to start cutting it down to very fine strips. As fine as you can get. I did try doing this with tissue paper, but I found the tissue paper kept breaking up too quickly, even with fresh blades. And again, we're just going to take some liquid CA glue. We're going to dip one side of the tape into the glue and then we're going to start putting individually each strand of hessian tape onto the camo net. Again it's advantageous to have a reference photo for this but try to keep it somewhat random. As you can see I do one side at a time and actually allow it to kink on itself. I don't glue it flat onto the net. I just glue each side onto the net and then I can let it flop and flow and then I'll just run some CA glue over the entire strip once I'm happy to lock it in place and to help protect it. This step is a little bit tedious, but the end result is actually quite cool once you uh, kind of start getting a bit of a shape going. I'm also fairing the length of each strip, some of them are wider, some of them are thicker, just to make them look a bit random, because after all these just would have been strips of uh, hessian or burlap, I believe it's called in the states. And they are somewhat randomised, and they just break up the silhouette of the helmet, it's a very effective camouflage tool. And they use a very similar method for camouflaging their tanks like the Sherman and Churchill for example. Now we're going to move on to adding the sling for our Bren gun, and for that we're just going to take some 1mm masking tape. Now this isn't a perfect or prop, um, a replica of how the Bren gun sling actually works, but this will give us a very simple way of doing one. So I'm going to take a small amount and fold it back on top of itself, and that's going to create the illusion of a buckle. I'm going to take that buckle and glue it with a bit of, um, with a bit of liquid CA glue, and I'm just going to lock it to the front of the Bren. And once that's dry, I'm going to then position the bottom of the sling into place. Now again, the real Bren gun, uh, it uses uh, quick detach clips to actually affix the sling to the weapon. But that's just a little bit too fiddly for me. And this works just fine for just a, a quick fix. And once again, I'm just going to take a little bit of CA glue and lock that in place. And then I'll just run some CA glue over the length of the strap just to lock it in place. And there you have a very basic strap. And then just to actually further enhance the look of him carrying the Bren gun, I'm just actually going to drill out a, a clinched fist I have from my spares box. And I've also cut off a little bit of the length of the handle just to ensure that it sits properly in his hand. And I'm just going to keep test fitting until it actually realistically fits into the his fist to actually look, make it look like he's actually clenching his weapon. And once you're happy with it, you want to just glue it in place. Again, just using some slow setting glue just to uh, help you line things up and make sure you're happy with the, with the final pose. And once we give him a coat of primer, in this case, Flejo Surface Primer Grey, we're left with this. So this is a very simple and easy uh, upgrades you can do to your plastic figures. Do join me in part two of this video. We're going to paint up our Royal Marine Commando and get him ready to storm the beaches. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I've been Shane. Do catch me in the next couple of videos covering the D-Day campaign. Bye bye.